This is, in my opinion, the best mini gaming PC that Menace Forum has ever released. It's known as the 790S7, and in its stock form factor, it came with the Ryzen 9 7940HX, so we got 16 cores, 32 threads, and a low profile RTX 4060. Came with a pre installed 400 watt power supply with a single 8 pin PCIe connector. And in this video, we're going to be upgrading this thing across the board from the CPU, motherboard, and even the GPU. I want to go up a generation with the GPU, and I also want to add an X3D CPU here. So to do this, I'm going to be using the Menace Forum 790i X3D. What we've got here is an all in one motherboard, just like what's in it right now. But instead of the 7940HX, we've got the 7945HX3D, 16 cores, 32 threads, with a total of 144 megabytes of cache. This should be a nice upgrade over that 7940HX. We'll talk about the GPU upgrade in just a second, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Moving back over to the mini PC, I also wanted to upgrade this GPU. And like I mentioned, this came pre-installed with the RTX 4060 low profile. You can also buy one of these mini PCs bare bones. But in order to upgrade this, we're just going to go up a generation to the RTX 5060 low profile. Unfortunately, uh, they only offer an 8 gig model of this 5060. It's got 8 gigs of GDDR7, triple fan design, one 8 pin PCIe connector, and I'm going with a gigabyte variant. So it's basically the same form factor as the RTX 4060 that we're going to be pulling out of this unit. So we'll go ahead and get this thing apart. Uh, first up, we'll just pull this GPU out. And trust me, this stuff is not going to go to waste. This is going to go in another small form factor PC. We'll get the motherboard, CPU, and cooler out. And this is kind of an all-in-one unit from Menace Forum. I may reuse this fan. I know it's a bit smaller than we can uh, install on these boards, but it's got that foam tunnel on it. And once we put the side panel on, we've got a cutout. So it's just going to draw cool air directly from that side and blow it right over the cooler. It does a great job with this board like it is up to around 100 watts. So I think it'll handle the X3D version. And speaking of that, these are basically the same board designs here. Mini ITX with a built-in mobile CPU. We do have a uh, M.2 cooler on the one with the X3D. This is just a higher end version, so it does come with that with the fan. I've got a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD already installed here. And it'll slide right down in here without an issue. And I do love the case design that Minus Forum has come up with here. We've got that 400 watt power supply. It's going to be plenty for this X3D chip and that RTX 5060. I mentioned that I'm going to be using this 90 millimeter fan that came pre-installed. Does a good job, but you could go with a 120 if you wanted to. I don't have kind of a foam tunnel system that will allow us to draw all that cool air in directly from the side panel. So I'm going to test this out first. We'll see how it performs. And then if I need to, I can upgrade. The last thing I need to worry about here is that GPU. And just to give you an idea, you can see that these are basically the same exact form factor. I'm not sure which one is which. Okay, left hand side is the 5060. Right hand side is the 4060. So yeah, we shouldn't have any issues installing this in the PC. We've got that one 8 pen PCIe connector. We'll go ahead and slot this right down in. And as soon as I can get it to line up, we'll just go ahead and snap it in. But we're about done here. And I do have 32 gigs of DDR5 installed. This will run it up to 5200, but it's 5600 megahertz RAM. I was kind of hoping we could overclock with the X3D, but up to 52 with the board we have here. And once it's all complete, it looks exactly the same. So I'm not sure if Menace Forum is going to be doing something like this in the future with an X3D chip in the RTX 5060 with a mini PC being sold just like this. 
But since I had the parts, I figured we'd go ahead and test it out. So let's jump into some benchmarks and then we'll get right into some gaming. One thing to note here is both of these CPUs run it up to 100 watt TDP. I've got it set up in the BIOS with both of these. And uh, with Geekbench 6, you can see that the 7945HX 3D is beaten out single core and multi with the 7940HX. Pretty surprised here. We're actually over 3000 on single and over 19,000 on multi with the HX 3D version. So a good jump with Geekbench 6, but once I moved over to Cinebench R24, just that multi-core score, not a huge jump. On the 7940HX, we had a total multi-core score of 1,748, and on the 7945HX 3D, 1,782. I also ran 3D Mark Steel Nomad, and on the upgraded system, we got a total score of 3,183. Our FPS was right there at 31.84. And on the stock system with the 7940HX and the 4060 low profile, we had a total score of 2,324 and an FPS of 23.24. So for the most part with synthetics, yeah, I mean, we're getting higher scores here, but now it's time to jump into some real world gaming. And the first game we have here is Spider-Man 2. We're at 1440p high settings with DLSS set to balanced. I'm using the transformer model for DLSS. And one thing to keep in mind is with the RTX 5060 low profile, we've only got eight gigs of VRAM. If you take a look at Afterburner, we're right there on the edge at these high settings. Now this game will run at ultra on this card here, but unfortunately it does run out of VRAM and we'll get some stutters going on. But with it set up like this, by the end of this run, I had an average of 97 FPS, which is more than enough for a system like this at 1440p. And to kind of give you an idea, this PC in its stock form with that Ryzen 7940HX and the RTX 4060 low profile, same exact settings here, we're averaging only 72. Still very playable like that, but now we're getting an average of 97, which is a really nice bump over the stock system. The next game I wanted to test here was Doom the Dark Ages, and unfortunately I've not tested this on the RTX 4060 system with these same settings. But right now with the 5060, we're at 1440p medium with DLSS set to balance. We're getting an average of 63 FPS, and we could get more out of it by using DLSS frame generation, but I wanted to keep it just like this. So it's not phenomenal, but it's playable, and to tell you the truth, I'd probably just drop this down to 1080 high. Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, extreme settings with no DLSS, no FSR. We just don't need it here with the RTX 5060 in this game. On this system, we're getting an average of 111 FPS. And even over on the stock system with that RTX 4060, we had an average of 93. So it's not a huge jump here, but obviously we are getting a bit more out of it. Marvel Rivals at high settings, 1440p with DLSS set to balance performs really well here. We're seeing an average of 122 FPS, so you could lock this down at 120, have a really good time with it at 1440 high. And this was actually a really big jump over the stock system with the RTX 4060. Over there, we were averaging 81 with these same settings, so we gained 41 FPS on average with this X3D chip and the RTX 5060. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. 1440p Ultra with DLSS set to quality. And I'll tell you, on the RTX 4060, I usually use DLSS at balance. But with this system here, we were able to just set it to quality and we're seeing an average of 92 FPS. With these same settings on the stock unit with the RTX 4060, an average of 73 FPS. So another really nice jump. And one thing we don't have over on, uh, you know, the RTX 4060 is multi-frame gen. But since we've got the RTX 5060 now, we can use DLSS multi-frame gen. So here it is at 1440 Ultra with frame gen set to X4 and we're getting over 200 FPS on average. Of course, they are fake frames. A lot of people just don't like fake frames, but I mean, if it looks good and it performs well and you like playing the game, then go ahead and use fake frames. I mean, it's really up to you. Last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU and GPU temps. With all of this testing, side panel was on. 
We've got that 7945HX3D using the stock fan curve from the BIOS. Average CPU temps for 1440p gaming were 70 degrees Celsius. And with that 90 millimeter fan I used, it's actually working way better than I thought. Maximum recorded was 76. Now, when it comes to the GPU, definitely got a little hotter than I'd like. And this low profile RTX 5060 does seem to do that with the stock fan curve. We can adjust this from Afterburner or another third party app. But average temps over there at 1440p gaming were 75 degrees Celsius and the maximum recorded was 81. So I do think, you know, tweaking that fan curve is really going to help out. So was it worth upgrading this PC? Uh, probably not. I mean, we got better performance on the CPU side and GPU side. I kind of thought that would be the case, given that we're upgrading to a higher end GPU and a higher end CPU. But if you've already got one of these with that RTX 4060 and the 7940HX, I mean, it's perfectly fine. You're still going to have a really good time gaming on that machine, but it would be nice to see something like this come to the market with the HX3D CPU and the RTX 5060 right out of the box. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on this PC with the upgrades, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in any of the parts or the PC itself, I'll leave links in the description below. And like always, thanks for watching.